Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading, and then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. This week, we're kind of looking at a single theme that's woven through our reading, Can I Trust God with My Everyday Life? Today, I'm joined by Shore Daughty, and we're looking at a passage from Genesis chapter 18. And the question, or the lesson that we want to talk about, it's too late and I'm too old. <laughs> You're already <laughs> laughing. So the scene of Genesis 18 um, is unusual for several reasons. Uh, the Lord pays a personal visit uh, to the planet. Uh, God himself, along with what seems to be two angels, swings by Abraham's place under the oak trees of Mamre on his way to visit Sodom in judgment. Um, and the idea that God would pay a personal visit to the earth reflects that he does not desire to stay distant, but he is involved with us. God could surely have seen and known everything on earth while he was sitting in the realms of heaven. Or he could have sent emissaries, his angels, uh, to visit humans and report back to him any of the details that he needed. But his personal visit represents his concern, his love, his interest in the lives of mankind. The book of Genesis is also silent about how Abraham was able to recognize the identity of his special visitors. Perhaps at first he was merely showing hospitality to passing travelers, but somehow he seemed to know God well enough to recognize him in human form. And it seems clear that God's visit was for a specific mission. Now, the mission seems to be twofold. One, God has come to deliver the message that Sarah will have a child, the long-awaited son of promise, by next year. So there's, there's a deadline to it. And then secondly, God has also come to deliver judgment to the city of Sodom because of his wickedness. It's interesting um, that the message that the long-awaited son of promise would soon arrive was given to Abraham and Sarah on such this ordinary day, right? The description of Abraham seems to imply that sitting under the shade tree in the heat of the day was not unusual. And for Sarah, what could be more ordinary than cooking and preparing a meal and a show of hospitality for travelers? After the meal, God delivers this message to Abraham. They were gathered outside the door of Abraham's tent, and Sarah's waiting inside the tent, as would be the custom for a woman of that day, when her husband is meeting with other men of business. When God informs uh, Abraham that Sarah would give birth about this time next year, Sarah overheard this message. It struck her as absurd, and as it would for all of us today. She was well past her childbearing years, years so she silently laughed, to herself and said, how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is also old? English traditions of the Bible usually translate the word, uh, the Hebrew word Edna as pleasure. The context would suggest the reference is to sexual pleasure, which would be necessary in order to lead to childbirth. However, the etymology of the word suggests the meaning is about abundance and possibly links to Eden, its paradise garden. So a literal translation might read like this. After I'm withered, there will have been lushness for me with my Lord old. In essence, Sarah said, it's too late and I'm too old to recapture Eden. Over and over again, God has repeated this promise to Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son. They would have held on to this promise for more than 15 years and have yet to see it come to pass. It's logical that Sarah would have given up any hope of becoming pregnant by this time. God's plans often involve not only ordinary days like the one in which God visited Abraham and Sarah, but often involve worn out, too late, impossible situations. Sarah is postmenstrual. She no longer has any eggs to be fertilized. Abraham is old, implying that impotence has set in. If there is yet an egg in Sarah's womb to be fertilized, it would still be unlikely for Abraham to give her a child. The solution for too late situations and too old people, so T-O-O, -O, too late and too old, is in verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? This is the question the Lord asked back. When Sarah laughed at the absurdity of her becoming pregnant, God's reply was simply to ask her whether anything was too hard for the Lord, and the answer is no. So Cheryl, I almost called you Sarah. 
<laughs> I mean, I know I'm getting older, but come on. <laughs> Cheryl, have you ever faced a circumstance when you felt like it was too late for something good to happen, yet something good did happen? Can you think of a situation like that? In thinking about this question, I think that I have come to a realization in the past several years of my life that I am not sure I had that perspective on before, but I have realized that I am an optimist, especially <laughs> compared to most people. <laughs> um, so I, it's really hard for me to, and I find that a blessing, that it's really hard for me to think of a situation where I just thought all hope is lost. Right. Um, that there just could n- never be any redemption to the story or the situation. But I will also say that I find a pattern and I have experienced that in my own life too. Um, the pattern to me seems to be that the people, when we get the most frustrated and downhearted and hopeless about a situation, it can often be in situations where it's either us or somebody really close to us where we think, like I've just sat and watched this destruction, watched you self-destruct for so mm-hmm. long, or watch somebody go through this health crisis that seemed just eternal for them, where you finally think, okay, like I'm just going to have to accept that this end is not going to be what we had all hoped it was going to be, or maybe that the end is going to be bad, Right. what we would consider to be bad. I would say an example of that would be people who have lived through watching a loved one be a drug addict. Mm. It's exhausting to be a part of. It's exhausting to watch. It's destructive to every family member that's involved. And at some point, I think it is easy for us to say, this is never going to change. This isn't going to be good. This person is either going to self-destruct or God's just not going to help them out. It's too late. They're too far in the hole. I think it's easy to fall in those traps. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't normally find myself, um, processing whether a hundred year old person can have a child. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I do, I have, I run into frequently situations where there's someone struggling with an addiction and family members are just worn out. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I was having a conversation recently with a, a distressed person over a sibling who was, who had, struggled with irresponsibility. That's how I'm going to put mm-hmm. it. And they're older than me, mm-hmm. right? So they're not young. And, and they've been, been that way for 40 plus been years. Going on forever. Right? They were just, they were feeling guilty, you know, because they were having to take action and, mm-hmm. and, and, and they were, they wanted the best, but they had given up believing, you know, that it could change. Um, but I, I have, <clears throat> I could also point to situations where I've seen after many, many years, God work and do some pretty incredible things. Oh yeah. And so it's it's never too late, but it is a struggle for us, especially when something seems impossible, mm-hmm. right? I mean, because under just the natural law of things that her having a child at her age was impossible, mm-hmm. right? No, but what it sure how, seemed like it. Right. And they had, they had obviously given up believing, you know, um, and, you know, I, I think it's just tough, um, you know, because if, if that's the question, if the question is, is anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is no, because if I ask you that, right, you're going to say no, Yeah, I'm going to say no, nothing's too hard for the Lord, but I could tell you some things I've give up on, right, that I would just pass right out if I saw him do it. <laughs> right? Well, I do think we become complacent Yeah, about a lot of things. And I, I think sometimes we assume we just need to accept this and leave it alone. But I can think of people, like you're talking about, where you think nothing's ever going to change, and then all of a sudden it does. And you find out about their mom, their sister, their aunt, you know, their uncle who or their pastor who's been praying for them consistently for 25 years mm-hmm. who just never gave up on it. And and then and then I'll think to myself, would this have happened if those people had not just continued to have faith that God was going to change it, that hope still existed 
and that he was going to come through. We don't do prayer requests here. Mm -hmm. But having grown up in church, I grew up where the people gave him prayer requests. And, you know, it was out loud in, in the service. And, you know, I can think back to some times in my, our generation is somewhat cynical, but I, I can think of times where I sat in service and I'd heard the same person give the same request mm -hmm. for so long. I was like, nobody, I, I, I'm just saying how my younger, I don't think this way now, or I try not to think this mm -hmm. way now, let me say that. But I, I remember being younger, like, yeah, we know, we all know. We're tired of praying about it, mm -hmm. right? You know, been going on for that's so right. Long. Yeah, and but they they continued to believe and trust God that God was, but it was personal to them, yeah. right? So, what kind of things typically get in the way of us believing that nothing is too hard for the Lord? Doubt is one of the biggest things that get in the way. I think our um, inability to fully trust God often because I think as much as we do trust him as much as you can learn to trust him I think it's hard for us to understand what it would really be like to 100% trust him with every step you took every decision you made every little bit of faith that you have in a situation that seems totally impossible and I also think you know this has kind of been a theme through the things we've talked about this past week our impatience mm -hmm. can also really get in the way of us completely trusting that God can change and totally turn around any situation because to us, so like for Sarah and Abraham, I mean, 15 years seemed like an eternity to them. And right. if you were waiting to have a child, it would be. You would have given up most likely at that point. Even... If you were in your 30s. Yeah, that's you, what I'm saying. After 15 years, you've most likely given up. Mm -hmm. If you're in your 70s. The you, ship has sailed. Right, that's right. Or at least you <laughs> yeah. think it has, right? Yeah. I think it's in those moments that it really is um, tougher. And, and when it looks like on the outside. You know, because if you're 30, 35, even 40, mm -hmm. saying... You know, we're believing God for a child. Most of us can believe that could come to pass. Yeah. If you're 70 or 80, 90, mm -hmm. 100, you think they're foolish. Yeah. Right? And so you don't talk about it to other people. You know, it even says she laughed in her heart. It doesn't say she said it out loud. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because God knows that's the thing we need to understand. And that, for me, when I think about this story, the thing that I ask myself is, where am I doubting and have unbelief inside? Because on the outside, most of the time, I'm going to say the right thing. Yeah. Yes, God can do that. Yes, I'm trusting God. You know, it goes through my mind almost every time I lay hands on somebody to pray mm -hmm. for them. Um, it is, what in me is keeping this from happening? What in me is doubting this? So I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that when he showed up in person to proclaim this to them, and, and he didn't say, you are carrying a child like he did to Mary, right? Right. Like the angel did. He didn't say that. He said, you are going to. Mm -hmm. And then he questioned her about the response. And I just wonder if it wasn't as much about the process of, if you're going to fully trust me and believe, then this is going to come into being. This is how I'm going to make this happen. Do you understand what right. I'm saying? What the difference is between him saying, you're pregnant now, or you will be pregnant in a year when I come back. If it also had to do with him realizing that they had not been fully trusting him right. up to that point and that he wanted to get them to the point that they did. So in, 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 in you, you use Mary as an example, there was no effort or trying on her part to right. make that happen. It just happens. Yeah. In all indications in this, outside of it being supernatural timing, mm -hmm. seems to happen by natural methods. Mm -hmm. If you're in your 80s or 90s, the, I'm trying to think of the 
best way to say this. The the natural methods have waned yeah. significantly. Everything doesn't work like it used to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and on a best case scenario. Yeah. And so, you know, you would think that probably after trying for a few times or a few years, yeah. they just quit trying. Mm-hmm. You know, I wonder if that has as much to do with it as anything, yeah. right? That we, we, we stop acting out, you know. I, I think I would respond better this time in this passage than I would have the 15 years before. Because right. at least this time. It seems more certain. That's right. Well, this time next year means I got a three-month window-ish, mm-hmm. you know, that I got to get pregnant in. But the other time it's like, okay, this can go on forever and it's never taking place. I think it's those, it's the gaps you know, when God puts a deadline on it, it's it's like the scripture that says, train up a child when the way he should go when he's old. Mm-hmm. The question I've always asked is, what is old? How much time is in between? Right. <laughs> yeah. Just what is old? You know, yeah. if, if old is 30, is it 40? Is it 75? Mm-hmm. At least then I know. But the thing I found is old for this kid might be 15. Yeah. Whereas old for another kid might be 75 before they figure it out. <laughs> but that you're not even going to live to see. Exactly. And yeah. you're, dis- you're you're discouraged because they can't figure it out. And it, those promises that say next year this time, okay, I can sort through a year. Mm-hmm. I can make it work for 12 months. I can hold out for that long. And really, if it's going to happen in 12 months, in the next 90 days, you're going to know. Yeah. Right? But when it's uh, open-ended... It's tough to trust God. It is. It's hard to be in that waiting, like holding time when it feels indefinite. And there's no sign. Yeah. Right. There's just no sign. You know, it's just, it can be discouraging. It can be. But I will also say that this is a great uh, result, I think, of, or example of God creating a situation in which we could not question that it was anything other than his hand Mm -hmm. that had made it happen. And I think it would probably do us good when we're in those waiting situations that we just trust he's creating a situation like that. And, and people where you see that incredible change happen in their life, where you never imagined that their heart was going to soften up enough to be able to accept Christ and accept his forgiveness for all the sin in their life. And it feels miraculous when it does actually happen when we have spent so long believing that it couldn't. Thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us Monday as we continue our conversation around our daily Bible reading.